This is CNN Breaking News. We're following breaking news. Our team outside the Manhattan courthouse where former President Donald Trump's hush money trial is happening just witnessed a disturbing scene. A man set himself on fire near the location where they were going live. Uh, it happened just moments after the court impaneled the full 12 member jury, a historic moment. It was, let's get right out to CNN's Laura Coates. And Laura, you were standing there interviewing a guest when this all happened. And I know this was deeply jarring and affecting to watch this happen. Um, walk us through what you saw happen outside the courthouse. Well, we were standing, as you know, just outside of the Manhattan courtroom when history had just been made by a fully impaneled jury. And we thought we were reporting on that history. Instead, life would change the course of events here today when a group of people who were standing near an area that once had a Trump flag that was waving in the wind in the courtyard area, a group of people began to scream. Our attention was turned towards that area as onlookers saw some sort of pamphlets go up in the air. Immediately, over the course of what has come to describe modern American history, we had first thought it was an active shooter to look to the area where people were running away from. At that point, I saw a man lift his arm and appear to put something on his body, followed by flames that engulfed his entire person. It not only lit his body into flames, but the area around him. People were screaming around the area, and an immediate smell came around from not only some form of a chemical accelerant, but also from the scent of burning flesh. Now, we had people in this area. Law enforcement is all around, including Mayor Adams at one point on Monday, who'd come by to witness the presence of police. Remember, an American president was sitting inside of this courthouse, Secret Service, law enforcement detail in the heart of Manhattan, an area where law enforcement is well known to be. It's in front of an active courthouse. They all ran. You saw many officers who were taking off their coats, trying to stop the flames from coming. He has been taken away on a gurney now we see a number of people in the area trying to pick up pamphlets all across the park around us. Police officers, law enforcement detail, we're trying to get a sense of what was on those pamphlets as well. And we'll bring you the latest reporting as soon as we have it. Laura Coates for us there outside the courthouse in Manhattan. Laura, thank you so much. And just to remind everybody kind of where we sit right now, we have this fully impaneled jury. History has been made. The for first ever uh, former president to face criminal trial. It is moving ahead. We now have an eye toward Monday where the judge is expecting to begin uh, opening arguments. Now, as that was happening, we were talking about that That's news. Right. Laura was talking about that news. That is when this person appeared to set themselves on fire just outside that courthouse. Uh, we'll, of course, continue to monitor that news and, and bring you the latest details as we get them, but we do want to focus on what was happening uh, in court. We have with us uh, CNN uh, legal correspondent, chief legal correspondent Paula Reed, also CNN legal analyst and former federal prosecutor Jennifer Rogers. Uh, Paula, first to you, we are anticipating the Sandoval hearing this afternoon, and it, uh, effectively this is going to detail what aspects of Donald Trump's legal history could be entered into this case? Yeah, this could be pretty fiery given the, the circumstances here, the increasing tensions between prosecutors and defense attorneys. And the reason they're having this hearing is because Trump and his team, they are seriously considering having him testify in this case. That is surprising to many people because most experts would agree that is probably not a good idea based on his previous uh, appearances uh, in other civil cases and how he's conducted himself so far. But look, his defense attorneys, they believe that he could handle himself and, and hope, hopefully help his case. So during this hearing, they're going to go through what would be in bounds for prosecutors to cross-examine him about if he takes the stand. So this is going to be really interesting to watch. It sure is. Let's also go out to Jennifer now. And Jennifer, now that we have all of these jurors that have uh, been impaneled for this historic jury, we've learned that during this process, several prospective jurors got emotional during their questioning. Is that unusual for jury selection? Does it speak at all to kind of the unique and high-profile nature of this case and the pressures? that exist around it? I think it absolutely does. It is not normal for jurors to get emotional. Sometimes prospective jurors get annoyed, right, that they're going to have to sit and uh, not go to work or do whatever they normally do. But I think it just shows the pressure that they will be under, right, the safety concerns they may have, the fact that for the rest of their lives, 
they will be public personas, at least even if people don't know their names, right? They will have participated in a historic event. Uh, and then not to mention the pressure of deciding the first criminal case ever against a former president. So uh, I think that it's, it's not surprising that people are concerned about serving, uh, emotional about concern, conserving, anxious about serving, and all of those things. And I think we may continue to see that. I'm afraid we haven't seen the last of a juror saying, I'm not sure I can do this. That may happen even after the trial starts, which is why it's a good thing that the judge impaneled six alternates. Mm -hmm. uh, Jennifer, I'm curious about the way you mentioned security concerns, and I'm curious about the way what we watched unfold outside of the courthouse could impact the proceedings in the sense that there may be an argument to potentially change venue or to further secure uh, the, the courtroom itself. Any indication as to how that ugly incident might change the way that this is this case proceeds? Well, I think it depends what we learn, Boris. I mean, if, if you're assuming that the person who set themselves on fire was a, a rabid Trump supporter and that it was some sort of protest against the trial, and then take the logical leap that someone who feels that way may also try to harm jurors, then sure, I can see a juror saying, wow, people feel so strongly about this, I'm concerned about it. Uh, but we don't know that yet. Uh, there is a ton of security around the courthouse as it is. It actually sits in the middle of a bunch of law enforcement headquarters and offices anyway. And then, of course, for the trial, security is even further beefed up. So, you know, I, I think and hope that, that the jurors should not take anything away from it, certainly at this point. And I'm sure that the court staff will do whatever they feel needs to be done if there does need to be an increase. And Paula, I want to come back to you as we await the, the next step in all of this, which is this hearing where they're going to go through uh, Trump's criminal history and decide what they can talk about if he decides to testify. When you're uh, talking to Trump allies and, and, and if you're his defense team, what are they hoping to get out of this? I know that there is this thought that, that he actually may well testify. Yeah, they believe that he has learned lessons. He's been through multiple civil trials just in the past year, about about a block away from where they are now. Mm -hmm. They believe that look, he saw what worked there, he saw what didn't work for him there, and that he would be prepared to take the stand in a way that would be constructive for his case. Now, we'll see how that goes uh, in reality, but of course they would hope that prosecutors would not be able to bring in uh, most of the largely civil uh, history that he has or any allegations uh, of, of criminal conduct. Because of course this is his first criminal trial. He's never been convicted criminally, but he has had a lot of civil, civil litigation uh, in his past. So I'm sure they want to bring in as little as possible. 